Back to the land of California My sweet home, Chicago Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Happy New Year's to you. Welcome to 2024 and welcome back to the Chicago Southside Blues Coalition show. I'm Isola Wright, better known as Lady Z. I am the CEO and the executive director of the Chicago Southside Blues Coalition and I'm happy to be back on Can TV and I want to thank Can TV for having me back this year in 2024 uh, to bring you uh, more information and history and knowledge and love of the blues, the Chicago blues that is, because in my mind, the Chicago blues is our national treasure, okay? So you know me, I always like to start off by reading our mission statement here at the Chicago Southside Blues Coalition. And our mission statement goes as follows. Our mission statement is to educate, entertain, and share with all Chicago communities the rich history of Chicago blues music and its musicians. That's very important, guys, because if we didn't have our blues musicians, we wouldn't have the blues. And we have to support them. It's very key. And so support looks like going out to their gigs, going out to their shows, okay, uh, supporting them, uh, you know, when they have a cry out for help, like we do, we give them food, uh, we try to help them with any kind of assistance that's within our power to help them. And so it's very important that we support our musicians, okay? We plan to carry out this mission by offering educational programs to senior establishments, public schools, and through live music and other cultural events. So when you see anything that's getting ready to happen uh, event-wise for blues music, okay, support them, okay? The tickets are really not <laughs> that expensive. Uh, you can spend $25, $35 for most events for the blues, okay? And so I think that's quite reasonable for most, most people, excuse me, for most people. And so when you see that event coming up, uh, if you like the blues or if you want to know more about the blues, go ahead and support, okay? We also uh, serve the youth of Chicago with free music lessons and art events. And we help struggling musicians with food donations and small fundraisers when illness and financial downfall presents itself, okay? And you never know uh, when that may happen, okay? And so uh, we had a good year in 2023, guys. Uh, we really did. And if you um, participated in any of our events, I want to thank you again. And please come again. Uh, we have some exciting events coming up for 2024. We're going to have uh, probably about two or three concerts uh, under the name of our Chicago Southside Blues Coalition. We also are gonna have some more art activities for uh, the youth uh, where they can come in and perhaps um, have a art contest well we will have them um, draw their favorite um, blues artists and give us a background information on that blues uh, artist and then we will have a contest a contest excuse me a contest to see uh, you know which one uh, has the best uh, drawing okay we will also have uh, our free guitar uh, lessons for youth that is still going on. We're going to pick that back up when the children are back in school next week. And so if you are interested in that, uh, I'm going to put the information on the board right now where you can get our information. And uh, just uh, go ahead and you can call us or email us uh, and uh, we'll go ahead and send you out the information where we're going to be having these guitar classes for the youth. You can call us guys at 773-967-0145. Now remember, um, we have so many programs going on. This year in 2024, we're going to be launching our senior programs. Okay, our senior programs. So if you love the seniors, like I love the seniors, 
Okay, two people you can't mess with around me. You can't mess with the youth and you cannot mess with the seniors around me. Okay, I'm, I'm going to be all in your face. Okay, but we're going to have uh, start having our senior uh, events this year in 2024. And see now when we do that, we definitely need some volunteers. So if you want to volunteer, guys, you can call us at 773-967-0145. 773-967-0145 or you can email us at Chicago Southside Blues Coalition at gmail.com. Okay, so we definitely going to have to have some volunteers once we go into the city, senior citizens home and to uh, give them some uh, blues education. Okay, but they probably can tell, tell me a little bit of something. Okay, because they were back then, they were there when the greats migrated to Chicago, okay? And what else do we have coming up, guys? Well, we have, um, we have plays coming up. We would like to do something where we can take um, our seniors to uh, go see, you know, a plays that have information about the blues in it. Uh, again, uh, we have, uh, oh, the most important thing, I'm uh, working on right now a partnership with the Chicago Food Depository. And so we'll uh, be able to uh, help communities, especially the Inglewood community, uh, with uh, food bags, okay? Because a dear friend of mine, she has a nonprofit. And for Christmas, she had children in Inglewood uh, write her a letter to Santa. And she said half, more than half of the letters to Santa ask for food. Santa, I don't want toys. I just want food. And I almost cried. Matter of fact, I think I did cry. <laughs> but I was like, wow. And so, you know, I'm like, well, I'm a nonprofit. We help people. That's what nonprofits do. We service the community. There is a need in Inglewood and children are hungry. And so I am uh, with you know, under the direction of the nonprofit, uh, mission statements, uh, the Chicago Southside Blues Coalition, we will be partnering with the Chicago Food Depository, and we're going to figure out how we can get bags of foods to uh, musicians, families who need it, and also to the children in Inglewood. And so, of course, we're going to need volunteers. So, again, Please give us a call if you want to volunteer once we get these uh, programs up and running, okay? So now, guys, I have this um, real short and cool uh, documentary that I want to share with you. And it's really short, and it's talking about, again, because I know I uh, kind of touched base on that two weeks ago, three, you know, well, three months ago, um, how... The blues migrated from the South to Chicago. And so I have something else that I would like to share with you right now. And uh, after that, uh, we'll come back and then I have a really important tip for you. So here we go with our documentary on the Chicago blues. Uh, Chicago is a town where you could come and, and survive because Chicago held out a political hand to black folks because it was building a dynasty on, 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 on black political muscle. from the South that began during the boom years of the Second World War. It was these people who were responsible for reviving country-style blues in Chicago. Well, I was walking, you know, in a strange city, and I see a police stand on every corner in town. Hobo, Jane Rogers, man. Well, I 
Cuando castillo poli Then the bell started ringing. in Georgia in 1919. Yeah, it's a hobo blues. So you like it? He came to Chicago in 1943. Met up with a man whilst I was sitting there drinking coffee like I'm just now. Uh, Mr. Bradford. He was looking for a painter. He kept a talking and I went to tell him about I could paint. And he said, uh, you talk solid. And I said, well, yes, uh, just only been here a day and a night. I said, uh, but I would like to work. He said, well, what do was paying you down in Georgia? I said, well, he was paying me a dollar an hour. He said, well, I'll give you a dollar. He said, I'll give you, a, make it better than that. I'll give you a dollar and a quarter. Which I didn't know, I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> and uh, I went on and took it. Yeah. Um, and chord sequences are based on old British ballads and white Protestant hymn tunes. The end product is unique. It comes directly from the people who sing it. The blues, you know, uh, is a story. A story of life. But it all depends on the life we live. And uh, but down south, most of them made up their songs as they went along. And uh, if uh, he was catching a mule to work with or something, and uh, the mules that he hadn't been working with, he maybe his shoulder was so from pulling a plow or pulling a heavy load or something like this. This is how these type of songs was made. And he would get to thinking about his mule got shoulder was so and all like this, and he'd just make a song. Maybe the song would go something like this, say. Uh, he would walk out there and say, Oh, I didn't plow oh, Susie. I didn't plow old oh, Bell. You know I can't find a mule with a show well. Musically, the blues has evolved a long way from songs like this, but the themes have remained the same. 
the pain of lost love, loneliness, misfortune, oppression, hard times. These troubles which black people hoped to leave behind in Mississippi stayed with them in Chicago. What happened is that um, the fantastic despair of black people coming north, there was so much expectation for a change. People have always seen the city as being the place of the future. Uh, black people did too, except that they found that uh, the future was compromised by a lot of hopelessness. Uh, it's true that some of us made our way, but a lot of us stumbled in the process. A lot of depressions occurred. A lot of slum housing overcrowded our lives. And um, I came to Chicago, and I had a basement apartment. And I was paying uh, $125 a month for a basement apartment. Now, if that's what the basement's going for, you know what the first floor, second floor, and third floor is going for. Now, that was good because I could find a place. Now, it don't bother me too much because I can go out and find my pal, John, rent him a room for $10. So that's $40 a month I got coming in. And my cousin's coming to town, I rent him a room for $10. So that's $80. So now, the interesting thing is a black man pays more for a basement apartment than white folks pay for a note on their house. It's the hassle that we're in. Now, consequently, what happens, that I'm in the basement apartment, I have an automobile. The two gentlemen that rent with me have an automobile. Now, you got three cars in front of a house that has space for one just in the basement. Now, go all the way up that house where everybody else has split that house up the same way, and you might have 14 automobiles, man, for two houses. So then somebody got to park seven blocks away in that whole community. So if I can't watch my car, it's easy for you to break into it. Now my insurance goes up. Okay? I make less than you on your job. And my dues is more because of a racist system. Now with more cars in the community and the same amount of small streets that white folks have, there's more accidents. And so consequently, I'm a bad risk. And so all of these pressures and all of these hassles and all of these fallacies make me different. Many black folks is not sophisticated enough to sit down and know what it is, but the nervous system feels it. And this is what we relate to, and this is what we react to. Then the world want to know what this all about, but you know I'm here. I got a mojo too. I got the Johnny Cocker look. I'm gonna mess with you. I'm gonna make you good. Leave me by my hand. Then the world will know that I'm the hoochie coochie man. But you know I'm here. Hey, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Every time I hear Muddy Waters, I just have to groove and dance. I hope you enjoy that uh, short documentary video. Um, it's very important for us to learn and understand and know the history of the blues to get a better appreciation of the music, okay? And I said I had a little tip for you. The tip is this right here, guys. Muddy Waters is still alive today. His music is still moving through, guess what, his children. We have two artists here, right here in Chicago, who are the offspring of Muddy Waters, okay? One of them has passed. May he rest in peace. I interviewed him on my radio show uh, years before his uh, transition. His name was Joseph Morganfield. They call him Mojo. 
And then he has his other brother who is still living, alive, well, and kicking. And if you want to hear some music that sounds so much similar to his father, Muddy Waters, okay? His name is Mud Morganfield. Uh, that's his stage name. Uh, he plays in Chicago, guys, all the time. He's known worldwide, okay? And so uh, if I ever, uh, you know, when he has his next event, and when I come to do my show, I will go ahead and um, support him and give out that information so that you guys can go. Even though it's not Father Muddy Waters, it is Son Muddy Waters. And I think Mud Muddy Waters, uh, I mean uh, Morgan Field, I think he's the oldest son. I'm not sure, but I think he's the oldest son, okay? And so, yeah, so that's the tip uh, that I wanted to give you guys to let you know that you can still hear the muddy water sound through his son, okay, who is a musician, a blues musician right here in Chicago. He plays all over the place, okay, in Chicago, in the suburbs, okay, all over the country, okay, and uh, you definitely uh, want to go and support that musician, okay. Another thing real quick, guys, I wanted to say and mention about the Chicago blues is that, I don't know, do you guys remember Maxwell Street? Do you remember Maxwell Street? I do. I was a youngin, and I remember going to Maxwell Street where they had the open air markets. And in those open air markets, they had blues musicians playing the blues. OK, so your parents would take you there and shop. You know, they had the uh, outdoor um, sandwich shops, you know, they're known for the polo sausages, the hamburgers, you know? I mean, anything you wanted, the greasy french fries with the, the, uh, uh, the grilled onions in there, that was Maxwell Street Market right at Roosevelt and Halsted. And for many, many years, some of the greatest blues artists in Chicago performed for free right there on the streets of Maxwell and Halsted, up and down that strip, okay? And uh, the merchants were there, they were selling their goods, the food, all you smelled was uh, grilled onions. <laughs> when you get home, your, your clothes smelled of grilled onions, right? But as a young girl, I remember going there, and a lot of people, you can ask your parents, if, you, if your parents are from Chicago, ask them about Maxwell Street. Mom, Dad, do you remember Maxwell Street? And that's where the blues cats used to go, and they would jam, and they would jam for hours. And it was nothing for you to go there and see Howling Wolf, Muddy Waters, Willie Dixon, okay? Some of the greatest ones here. So, guys, listen, I hope uh, I have excited you excited your appetite more for this great music that we call the blues. Make sure guys that you support us, support the Chicago Southside Blues Coalition. We need your help, we need your support, we need your volunteers. Uh, you can call 773-967-0145, email us at Chicago Southside Blues Coalition at gmail.com. And guys, you know, make it happen. Okay, let's get out the house this year. We want more in 2024. We want more blues, okay? And we want to help bring it to you, okay? And until next time, I will definitely see you again on Can TV nonprofit station. Have a blessed month.